Shiro Gane. First, 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 first. I need to apologize for those who were watching the stream. I know it's really late. Honestly, it's really is late. From the time I'm recording this, it's only been a week, but, but there's a problem. It's not that I can't stream it, it's the way I'm streaming it. By that I mean, I'm streaming a game that's being streamed to watch. By that I mean, I'm using PS Now, which doesn't download the game, it only lets you stream it. So I apologize. But the good thing was that because of Nino Kuni 2 being delayed, I don't have to actually stream it anymore and I can record it. So in the meantime, I do want to put this out, hopefully by the day it's recorded, which is Friday. Love at first sight, because the premise was literally love at first sight. You understand it once we start playing. Well, let's get to it. It's early in the morning. Oh yeah, before I say it is a visual novel. For some it may be boring, but I do enjoy it from time to time. Although, let's be honest, this uh, I've been doing visual novels. I've had one and two. This and the other one. Which, I'll get to it more. This is a path I always take to get to school. Although this one would actually be shorter than the other. So we'll finish this probably before I finish the other. I normally have to hurry, but today I'm taking it easy. I had a little extra time to get out of the house, which is kind of unusual. I'm feeling good under the warm morning sun sunshine and cool morning breeze as I head to school. I have a phone day over here. It's freezing now. I'm not in a hurry, but it still doesn't take a long to get to school. My house isn't right, isn't next to the school, but it isn't far away either. Even if I don't leave early, as I did, I never have to run to get to school, on time or anything. That's what I'm thinking as I change into my school slippers. I absently climb, absentmindedly climb the stairs, heading to my classroom at the second floor, class 2-2. I put my hands on the door and open it, and then... Oh my! <laughs> uh, okay, this one doesn't have a voice, so I have to actually do it. All right. Oh, Makun, good morning. You're here early as usual. How unlike un you earlier than unusual? <laughs> How unlike you? Her loud ear-splitting voice makes me shake. <laughs> morning days. Good morning, Akemi. I I see you're getting your head start on being loud and obnoxious today. There's nothing to worry about with being energetic. This overly spirited person is Tsunemi? Tsunemi Akemi. Uh, sometimes I hate when their names are similar, their first and last name, because I feel like I'm going to mess up even more when I'm trying to say She's always like this, the kind of person who always goes going full throttle for the moment she wakes up until the morning she falls asleep. You're not energetic. You're out of control, but I guess that's what I should be expecting by now. Morning, Tomo. You know her better than I do. Oh, right. Does she have a volume knob? Oh, okay. So it was... Morning. I've known Akemi for a long time, and I can say for sure that no, she doesn't. This is Ochiya Tomoyori. He's a zombie in contrast to Akemi. It's liveliness. <laughs> Hopefully, I wonder if that's true, which you, you'll understand once we get, continue. But unlike Akemi, his energy is level is in constant. He's lifeless all day, every day. Yeah, I've only known her for a little while, but I'm starting to realize that you'll get used to it. I should really pay attention to the names. Makun, lately you've started treating me as a bad as Tomokun. 
Is that really how you should be treating someone you, you've only known for two months? Wait, what? Oh, she's only known for two months. Considering how annoying you are, do you really expect me to treat you any differently? Yeah, I've known these two for about two months, though. I've gotten pretty close to them in that time. I'm Fukunaga Mamoru. Two months ago, I had switched high schools because of my parents' work. Fall is almost over. I transferred in the middle of the season, and because of that, I was a bit of an oddity among the other students. I was really nervous at first, but luckily, these two came along and welcomed became my friends. That means Tomokun, say something. Well, it seems like you two are getting close. Yeah, thanks. Hey, don't ignore me. I can say for sure that Tomo is a real reason I'm comfortable here and now. He doesn't take care of his appearances and he's not the warmest person you'll ever meet. But he's pretty smart and ultimately a good guy. I've learned how dependable he is pretty quickly. Okay, ignore me. Okay, ignore me is now forbidden. You hear me? Well, ignoring me. We might be ignoring her, but I guess I owe Akami as well. The fact that she's so annoying and loud in her own real flaw is her only real flaw. I don't know anyone else inspiring than her. Lately, Akemi has been trying to get me to hang out with her and Tomo all day. The two seem balance each other out, though I'm though it's not a perfect balance. By any means, from what I hear, they've been friends since they were kids. Though Tomo once told me she's basically just been following me around this whole time. <laughs> I can see that. The bell rings. It's already time for homeroom. What's first period today? Math. Our homework's due today. You did it, right? Yeah, yesterday I finished with the time to spare for a change. I was actually able to get to bed early because of that. I said ignoring me was forbidden. Hey! The morning, the morning lesson end and lunchtime begins. L lunchtime, time to eat. Move from our classes to one farther down the hall. We're the only ones in here, and a coming thundering voice echoes through the empty classroom. The three of them have been coming to this empty classroom for the three of us. Have been coming to the three of us have been coming. To this cl empty classroom for lunch since I've transferred to this school. On the m on the menu today for is Salisbury steak. Awesome! What are you, a kid? Come on! Can you at least lower the volume during lunchtime? Tomo, help me out here. I think I swapped voices for. Her. After the moment, Tomo replies, "What do you want me to do about it?" Then he sighs and snatches Akemi's chopsticks from her. Hey! Then as Akemi opens her mouth in protest, Tomo stuffs a piece of <laughs> steak into her mouth. Hmm. She seems to have forgotten anything she wanted to say when the food entered her mouth and quietly chews it. Her mood improves a moment later and her expression dissolves into a bliss as she chews. She really is an airhead. I'm not her keeper, you know. Could have fooled me. Who else could have held back that freight train of a girl? <laughs> you think I can hold back a freight train? Okay, maybe not. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Akimi circles and spewing food everywhere, then realizes what she has just did, so she hastily closes her mouth and swallows. I'm the n number one most cheerfulest girl in town, Tsunami Akemi-chan. Oh, she had to, she had to chant to her name. Oh. <laughs> and with that, she goes back into eating her lunch. I guess she can't stay quiet for long, no matter what she's doing. 
The most cheerfulest girl in town. I don't think you have any competition for that title. No kidding. She's one of the school's celebrities. Tomo starts his own lunch. Seriously, one of? You mean there's more? Wait, there is? Yeah, our high school has a lot of unusual students. There is a lot of rumors floating around concerning our school, it seems. Wow, what other kind of celebrities are there? You don't know? How about any of them? Well, first there's... Uh, Tomo takes a quick glance at Akemi, but she <laughs> gives a lost in it. Food in loose paradise. She's not vi even listening to us anymore. Well, there's a lot of them. If you really want to know, I'll tell you later. Just don't, it, I can understand. He doesn't want to have. It's not that he's slow. It's just it's too bothersome to remember them. So he probably doesn't remember them. He doesn't want to talk back about it in front of Akemi. I guess it's a touchy subject. Oh, interesting. It's not what I thought. But I'll make it to the point and ask about it later. All done. You eat way too fast. Crap, I barely touch any of my own food while listening. While we were chatting, I should have started my own lunch while she had her mouth open closed. I'm not going to get another chance now. Hey, what are you talking about? I was recounting an epic saga of how you won our fame, how he seemed to be really interested in it, so I wanted him to hear it from the source. Wait, what? Really? Sure thing, Makun. Do you want to hear how about when I saved the town for the first time my, with my fantastic power? I hadn't met Tomokun yet, and... Well, I, I'm sorry, I could not... <laughs> I wanted to laugh during that. No, no, no. I really don't want to hear about that. Come on, Tomo. A minute ago, you told me you'd take care of her, and now you're telling me to do it? I haven't even touched my food yet. So you, so be her friend for a bit. Without a second glance, he starts eating his lunch in silence. Ma-kun, are you listening? So anyways, my mom had gone out shopping, and... No, you know, he, you're the one who needs to listen, man. How did I get roped into this? And so for the rest of the lunchtime, I got stuck listening to her story. Well, I finished my lunch and gave her an occasional nod. <laughs> my coon, where's Tomokun? I can't be called out and pecking my stuff. She rushed out of the classroom right when class ended, and it seems she's back just as quickly. He said he had something to take care of back in the pl at his place and left a little early. What's up? Oh, really? Hmm. Well, can you take this to the third year's classroom for me? I promise to return this before the end of the day, but I've got a club meeting I gotta go to. She hands me a small paper bag. It feels like it's got books or something in it. <sighs> Fine, I'll do it. Thanks a bunch. Give it to a student in class 3-2 named Yai Kata Katashi. I'm counting on you. No sooner does she say that she she disappears and she just can't sit still, can she? I suppose I'd better get along going. No telling how long this Yai person's going to be there for. I finish packing up and head to the classroom on the third floor. I arrive to the third year student's classroom with Akemi's package and look for the person I supposed to deliver it to, but some of the other students tells me sh that she happened to step out for a bit. Then she says she'll be back soon so I can just wait in here for her, but ten minutes pass and she's still nowhere to be found. Maybe I should have one of the other people give it to her and just go home. School's over and most of the students have been in their club activities for a while now. While I'm waiting for the third year classroom, the other students file out and the school ground slowly become devoid of life. The noise of daytime activity has all but disappeared. I feel like uh, I'm in detention. I want to go home already. Giving up. 
I leave the classroom and turn towards the stairwell. My classroom is on the second floor so I usually don't spend any time up here. The layout of the two floors are pretty much identical but somehow I feel like there's, there's some alternative dimension. And just about as I'm about to descend the stairs, I start to hear, I think, our sobs coming from nearby. I figured I was alone and relaxed because of that, but then the sudden sobbing catches me off guard and I freeze. I hold my breath and strain my ears. It's not in my imagination. Someone's nearby and crying softly. Hearing someone crying in the empty building sounds like the beginning of a horror story. What am I saying? Is This isn't a horror story. School might be over, but the sun hasn't even gone down yet. Finding someone else in the building isn't that strange. Well, I say that, but the situation isn't exactly normal either. The sobbing continues. It sounds like it's coming from the next floor up. It's quiet, but the re it's quiet, but it ver reverberates off the narrow stairway. It's definitely coming from the floor above me, though I didn't realize it until now. But the building only has three floors. The only thing above me is the roof, right? School's over and the door the door to the roof should be locked by now, but I can still hear the crying. So there's no way it could be coming from up there. But if the door is locked, that means the way up is just a dead end. I can't just walk up there and check to claim what hap I happen to walk by. But before I can think through, my curiosity has me turning around and heading back to the up to the stairway. I climb the steps up as quietly as I can, though I can't help but make a little noise. As I get closer to the sound of the sobbing, I begin to hear it more clearly. There's just one voice, judging by its sound. It's a girl. Feels like I'm climbing up ten stories. But it only takes me a few seconds and suddenly I'm almost on the landing. I take the last step and turn towards the source of the crying. In front of me is a girl wearing our school uniform. She's lying against the door to the roof sobbing. The girl hears me walking towards us and starts shivering as she turns her head towards me. Nothing up to this point has been too out of the ordinary. At least until I saw her face. This girl stares at me with her single eye, her face sobbing wet from the crying. I don't mean that she's missing an eye, she literally had one giant eye in the middle of her face. Suddenly she registers that I'm standing in front of her and she jumps drawing her limbs to her body. A bit of light reflects and wipes the tears near her wide open eye. I can tell by the way she's looking at me she's terrified. She's not the only one though. Without really understanding what I'm looking at, I stare at her unmoving and she does the same. She's wearing our school uniform, but is she really a student here? Huh? No matter how many times I blink, a second eye doesn't suddenly grow out of her face. I finally realize that I'm what I'm seeing is reality. Faced with a girl who looks like she belongs in a fairy tale, I begin to strain to panic. Strangely though, I'm able to keep my fright from showing. The situation is unreal. I guess my brain just refuses to fully acknowledge it. I heard crying from what was going on. Are you alright? The longer in silence drags and the harder to become to break it. I try to come up with something, anything to say, force myself out of this stupor. But my mind is completely blank. At this point, anything is better than silence. I know. Shoot, I said the Japanese word. <laughs> But this was what I meant with with those little hints I've been going on about. It seems her mind blinks just as blank as mine. I work my mouth soundlessly a few times before I finally spring out the first thing that comes to my mind. Do you need something to wipe your face? Her uniform is black so I can tell it's wet from her crying. She doesn't have a handkerchief or anything though. I produce my own handkerchief from my pocket and move it and offer it to her. I approach the girl sitting on top of the stairs and give her the handkerchief and once again she starts shivering in fear. She's looking at me like I'm some kind of bizarre monster. 
Where did that word come from? I do not know. I am really that scary. Isn't she the monster here? Thank you. I hold up the handkerchief out stiffly uh, for several seconds. Then consciously, so cautiously, she takes the handkerchief and wipes her face. There's, those are the first words she's spoken so far. Her trembling voice is so quiet I almost don't hear it. I only transferred to this school about two months ago. I don't think I've seen you around. This is definitely the first time we've met, of course. I'm sure that if I had seen her, her face, I would have been burned it in my mind. There is no way I could forget seeing her now. Should I ask her? It's obvious from the way she's looking at me that she's still confused and afraid. We're not going to get anywhere at this rate. You must be in different classes since I haven't seen her around before. What grade in class are you in? I'm in 2 2. Class 1 2. Hmm. She actually gave me a proper response. She really is a student here. I guess not a monster or anything. Suddenly, it hits me. I've been staring at the same school and how the same world as this person all this time. Oh, one year lower then. Yeah. The com Wait, I actually. No, no, it just might have been the art style. I honestly thought that was the friend that we had. I this is what my honest thought. I literally thought it was gonna be aware of that your friend was this girl. But this is only based off the images I got from Steam when it shows little clips. The conversation The conversation Ah, the conversation grinds to a halt again. I can't think of anything else to say. Actually, it's not true. I have a mountain of things I want to say to her. But all it has to do with her appearance and I hesitate to bring that up. <sighs> what can I say? My mind is totally blank. Every heartbeat seems to get louder than the last. I panic. I thought I had... Right, I have to get going. Uh, the girl looks like she wants to say more, but without another word, I turn and flee down the stairs. I head to the shoe rack, change my shoes, and start rushing home. I walk for a few more seconds after clearing my camp, uh, the campus gate, then I pause for a moment and take a deep breath. Jeez, it seems that the girl didn't follow me or even call after me. Well, she tried, but it didn't work. She probably still sitting at the top of the steps in a desolate stairway. I'm cool with blowing up with him. A cool wind blow is blowing as I walk home and gradually regain my composure. My heart is still racing though. I think I'm going to feel uneasy about what just happened for a long time. I was really surprised. Maybe I don't fully understand what I saw. I think I'll have to think about it some more. Was there fear? Was I afraid of her? No, there's nothing scary about her, some girl, even if she is. Honestly, I can't shake my thought of some kind of monster, but she must be human. I, she must be a human high school student. She must be a human high school student. I don't know why I couldn't say that. I honestly don't. I was definitely scared out of my wits at first. But I think if she wanted to hurt me, she would have done it. In fact, she's been on harmless. Harmless. She has as timid as a mouse. But if that's the case, why do I still feel uneasy? In my mind, just unable to accept. She's the, she only has one eye. No, that's not it. It's not like I'm avoiding staring at her or anything. Actually, I don't think I could have looked away even if I wanted to. Whatever, it's not like I'm, it's worth dwelling on. The fact that I'm disgusted by her, the fact that I'm not disgusted by her, after all, this means it was just a pure surprise, right? Yeah, I think it was a reasonable conclusion at any rate. I think it's safe to say anyone who saw her face wouldn't forget it anytime soon. As I'm thinking this over, I finally arrived to a familiar entryway to my house. I was absorbing the thoughts. I guess I was autopiloting all the way home. 
I'm home. Uh, welcome. You're a little late, aren't you? What were you doing? I can't be roped me into being her errand boy. She wanted me to deliver something for her. Mm. Huh. Later than that, I got a deep sigh and lying in the foods and unable to sleep. For some reason, I couldn't tell my mom about the one-eyed girl. I wasn't like it was traumatic or anything, but I almost feel guilty. At any rate, I can't stop thinking about her. Mm -hmm. Really? I know that if I fall asleep, I'm going to have to rush to school tomorrow. But I try to forget about everything that happened today. <sighs> she looked like she wanted to say something back, but I panicked and ran away. I kind of regret not saying anything. I rolled over my futon several times, but eventually I come to the decision. I'm going to try to find that girl again. I feel like I should have at least learned her name. Hey, hey, hey. Before we continue, this is where I'll leave it off. This was a little tease. Now, you know a little more. I can tell you for sure that this game will not, will not be as long as Root Letters. This is a short visual novel. So, if you wish to enjoy it yourself, I will just give you the tease of Act 1, and you can continue it on your own. But if you wish to continue it, continue watching my video on this. But, I'll see you next time. Hope you keep watching. I've been your host, Shirogane, and see you next time. Bye.